This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best website platform for photographers to showcase their work and sell products. There's so much potential right now. With that Golden Gate Bridge in the background. Oh, there's just nothing. Oh, I'm so disappointed. I could probably make something do with everything we got, but not gonna be ideal. Not gonna be what I pictured. After traveling for a day to get up to San Francisco, my plans for the first sunset of photography seemed ruined. Not a single bird in sight, I started to look out to the ocean to try and salvage the situation. I might not get the shot that I'm looking for, but that is a long-tailed duck out there, which I've never ever photographed before, and it is swimming away. And it's a rarity in this area. See if he lands again. But these far out subjects and disinteresting scenes could only entertain me for so long. Something that was cool was to see how the surf scoter in the area fought against the waves. As huge and heavy waves approached, their ability to glide over the top seamlessly or dart under the hundreds of pounds of water crashing over them is incredible. But after an hour of trying to make something of it and no real photos as a result, I turned to a new possibility. So this is about as disappointing as it gets. I drove all the way to San Francisco today in hopes of getting that beautiful iconic Golden Gate Bridge in the background behind shots of some shorebirds up on this beach. I'd seen that shorebirds do come to this beach on eBird, yet when I'm here today, there's not a single shorebird in sight. And so I've traveled all the way here. I'm without the iconic kind of photograph that I was looking for initially. And it felt like all hope was lost. With only a single hour remaining, I decided to hike down to another beach a half mile down the way. This beach would be crowded and filled with people, which was a downside. But I figured that at the very least, there would have to be goals there attempting to rob people of their food, which would give me a subject to work with on the Golden Gate photograph I wanted. As I arrived, I immediately made out the locations that the gulls were frequenting on the beach, one of them being a wash out into the ocean. So I made my way over, started getting as low as I could to create some art. Luckily, they were feeding on some crabs getting washed down to the stream, as well as simply using the water to drink from. So they cooperated really well with the few precious minutes I now had left before sunset. Out of nowhere, a group of sanderlings flew right in front of me and started running around the beach like madmen. It's incredible to see how fast these little guys are, and even compared to me trying to keep up with them and reposition up front, I simply couldn't. So after a while, I headed back to the wash to wait for that perfect shot and moment that I came for. Sunset's getting closer now, and I'm really hoping to get the photo that I'm looking for to share it and display it as part of my portfolio on my Squarespace website. Every photographer knows the importance of getting to display their work, whether that's just to inspire others or to send as a showcase to a brand that's looking to partner with you. And this is where Squarespace comes in. Squarespace is incredibly simple to learn and use due to their fluid engine and provides for a seamless building experience. Back when I knew nothing on how to build a website, I was able to build one I liked in just a few hours that I could show off to people that I knew. Now I'm taking a new step with Squarespace and I'm using their email marketing integrated into their website builder to launch my very first newsletter I've ever created. For weeks, I've been planning out this newsletter to be your best source on the hottest news in wildlife photography and the best discounts I can find on photography gear, and I couldn't have built this without Squarespace. My newsletter is now available to subscribe to on my website, so go over there and check it out, and if you're interested in learning more, head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Jeremy Knipe to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. As the sunset came to a close, for a brief moment, heaven seemed to open up and light up the Golden Gate Bridge with some perfect light. As this happened, the western goal came into perfect framing and I fired off the shot that I was hoping for. As a California native, I've never captured a shot that quite represented my state so well for wildlife photography. And while not the shorebirds I was hoping for, this photograph still turned out almost as good as I could have hoped. And I'm so glad I finally captured this iconic state image that I've always dreamt of. But my time in San Francisco wasn't over just yet. 
The next morning, I would get the best shot of waterfowl of my whole career and get an encounter unbelievably close. For now, I enjoyed the sun setting over the mountains behind me, and I got to experience the Golden Gate Bridge heading into night and captured some gorgeous lights out in the distance behind the goals. I arrived on location nearly an hour before sunrise, making it super dark as I looked around the park for any initial signs of life. This morning, I was trying my luck at the Golden Gate Park, a massive three and a half mile long park in the heart of San Francisco. It's incredible to see places like this where nature and humans can thrive together in tandem and people can enjoy nature. As the morning started off, I spotted another iconic bridge that I had come to photograph today in the background of some bird photos. Crossing Stowe Lake and leading to the famous Strawberry Hill is the bridge erected in 1893 that defines the scene here at the Golden Gate's most famous lake. In these early morning hours, mallards and Canada geese posed for me in front of this famous site, but no other species were in this area of the lake yet. I headed over to the other side of the bridge and was pleased to bump into a group of American Robin and Stellar's Jays feasting on a berry bush. Watching these songbirds throw a berry seemingly the size of a throat down the hatch is always fun to watch. And with some beautiful morning light through the trees, I was able to capture an image I decently liked. Over on the other side of the bridge, some more mallards were hanging out. This side seemed to offer a better view of the bridge as well, which was exciting, and I took my chances with a few pairs that would swim up to us and around the area. Just a little ways further down the path, I bumped into a song sparrow singing on an open perch with some incredible backlighting and scenery, alongside a dark-eyed junco foraging nearby. Both made for some unexpected yet incredible takeaway photos. If you've been following my recent work, you'll know that I've really been enjoying using the Sigma 135 1.8 millimeter recently. So I was really excited when Sigma sent me over the 70 to 200 to test out in some of these beautiful San Francisco scenarios. I'll be releasing my review on this lens in about a week or two from now. So subscribe to the channel below if you wanna check that out when it comes. Before the day was up, I would get another amazing encounter and my favorite photo I've ever taken of waterfowl coming soon. But first, I crossed the bridge and adventured over to Strawberry Hill to experience some of what it must have felt like back when the park was erected. Being in touch with nature and the world around us is so important, and sometimes we can think of this as a new discovery, but even back in this park's founding in 1870, people knew that this was important to have an escape away from everyday city life. After adventuring around the hill and taking in some beautiful skyline views, I came back down to the water's edge and ran across a great blue heron hunting for something amongst the tall vegetation. I stuck with him for a little while, but the angles weren't quite ideal for photography, and I didn't want to get too close and in his way, so I eventually left him alone. Further down the way, I took a stop for a few birds, including a raven that had stopped to inspect some human food. While ravens are often given a bad rep for being creepy, they are actually some of the most intelligent animals alive today and are beautiful with their shiny feathers when you get to encounter them up close. As I was making my way around the base of the hill, I spotted some ducks I had really wanted to photograph here on my trip. A family of ring-necked ducks was swimming around close to the shore. And even more unbelievably, a bold and lone hooded merganser that I rarely get to see. Not only are these birds incredibly beautiful, but I had never gotten to get either of these subjects in photos that I really liked, so I was praying for a first. As they swam around, they got incredibly close up with me. Their stunning yellow eyes, incredible head displays, and feathers are fascinating and inspiring. And as the sun faded in and out, I got some in ideal backgrounds and captured the photos I was dreaming for. I love the way these backgrounds turned out. Some colorful and some moody. And after an incredible sunset and sunrise out in San Francisco, my plans didn't go exactly as expected, but rather they paid off in other ways that I couldn't have planned for. 
I'm thankful that our world has beautiful creatures like this for us to experience, and I hope this video inspired you to notice nature wherever you are in the world, even if it's at your city's local park. Thanks for watching. If you want to check out the new Sigma 70 to 200 when I review it in two weeks from now, I'd be honored if you subscribe below.